this is a long problem, so it'll probably take place over three videos. But this is to show a nice standard way of thinking about how to draw these face portraits for nonlinear systems in a differential equations class. So I do have a, a way of doing every one of these, and it's always exactly the same. So let's see if uh, we can get through this without too much damage or too much stress on all of you. I try to make this as easy as possible, and if you use this method with this one that seems more complicated to students, then it should work on something that's less complicated. First thing when I do these, I start out with the null clines, because that is just the easiest thing to think about. The null clines occur when dx dt equals 0 and dy dt equals 0. Not at the same time like equilibrium solutions, though. The null clines are the lines where the vectors in the vector field are strictly vertical or strictly horizontal. And what this does for us is it gives us guidance to how the solutions to the differential equation move around the phase plane. That's the, uh, the challenge of these. And so instead of drawing an entire slope field, we draw just small numbers of slopes to give us a guide. So when I do this, I take notes. And I make sure that I know how this is going to work and I write stuff down. If dx dt, the change in x and change in t are, are zero in a vector, that means these are going to be vertical slope marks along whatever these no clines turn out to be. Okay, so when dx dt equals zero, when x is equal to zero, and when minus x minus y plus 100 equals zero. Um, and again, this looks linear to me, so I'm just going to solve for y. y equals minus x plus 100. So this turns out to be the y-axis itself. This turns out to be a slanted line, has a y-intercept of 100. So there's one null cline and two null clines. They all have vertical marks on their, on them, on their axes, or on their lines. Um, now with dy dt equals 0, these are going to be horizontal slope marks, or vectors, however you want to put it. So dy dt equals 0 and y equals 0. And then when minus x squared minus y squared plus 2500 equals 0. So uh, this is just a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 50 squared. And this I do it this way so I can graph it easier. This right here is the x-axis. And this here is a circle. So there are two more null clines. So four null clines all together. Now what I'm going to do is just quickly kind of do a sketch of all four of these together up here at the top. And I'll use that uh, to make sure everything is making sense together as I move through it. So I'm just going to be concerned with the first quadrant because we're going to assume it's uh, for um, species. So if I graph this guy first, he's going to cross at 100 and then cross down here at 100 again. Slope of negative 1. This circle is going to have a radius of 50. Come down like this. So there are my four no clines, and I'm going to draw my slope marks on them. These two guys should have vertical marks. So the y-axis should have vertical marks, and this guy should have vertical marks. The x-axis should have horizontal marks, and so should the circle. There is one there. <laughs> okay. Now that's just a start to uh, help us move forward. Now, the next thing you might think about doing is finding the direction on it since you're working with null clines. But knowing the equilibrium points does help a lot in determining um, where you want to pick points to find the direction of those vectors. So let's go down here and let's worry about equilibrium points now. Get this all straight so you can see it. So equilibrium points. Now if you write out your null clines nice and straightforward, you know that this pair makes dx dt equal 0, this pair makes dy dt equal 0, so you can do combinations to make sure you get all your equilibrium points. So I know that if 
dx, if x equals 0 and y equals 0, if x is 0 and y equals 0, that makes both of them 0 at the same time. So that means one equilibrium point is the origin. That one's straightforward. Now if x equals 0, that makes dx dt equals 0, but also this x can be 0. So if x is 0 here and x is 0 here, what does y have to be in order to make this 0? So that's some math that I'm going to try to figure out here. So if x equals 0 and in the first one and then in dy dt in the second one, that leaves me with 0 squared minus y squared plus 2, 2,500 equals 0 as well. So what does y have to be in this case? So y squared has to be 2,500. So y has to be, it's could plus or minus 50. Think, not, let me write this. I'm talking and writing. It doesn't always work at the same time. It's plus or minus 50, but um, we're going to deal with the plus one because we're going to work in the, just the first quadrant. So in this case, we can have x equals 0 and y equals 50. Similarly, if y equals 0 and dx dt, we have the possibility that minus x minus 0 plus 100 can also be 0, and that would give me an equilibrium. So it shows me that 100 equals x, so that's going to give me another equilibrium point. So to make sure, if I plug 0 in for y here, that's 0 automatically, but if I plug in 0 for y, and 100 for x here, I get this bit to be 0, so that makes dx dt equal 0. Now the last one we haven't considered yet is whether or not these two guys intersect. Now you might say, well, Patricia, I can tell from the graph they don't intersect. Doesn't matter. Prove it anyway, because graphs aren't always very accurate. It's not hard. It's just a little bit of algebra. So you want to find the solution to the system y equals minus x plus 100. Oh, sorry. Find the solution to the system y equals minus x plus 100 and x squared plus y squared equals 50 squared. So I'm just going to use method of substitution. I plug in minus x plus 100 into x in the second equation. I'm sorry, into y in the second equation. So x squared plus minus x plus 100 squared is equal to 50 squared. And then I'm going to solve for x. So x squared plus, and foil that out, that's going to be x squared minus 200x plus 100 squared equals 50 squared. Combining like terms, 2x squared minus 200x, um, and then 100 squared minus 50 squared turns out to be 7,500. Do the math yourself if you don't notice. Put this on pause, do the math. Um, now, what I need to do is find the solution to this quadratic. So before I do that and make it easier, I'm going to divide everything by 2. This is a lovely 3750. Now, what I'm really concerned with is whether or not this is going to give me any real valued answers. So what I'm going to do is do the discriminant first. And the discriminant is a thing that's under the radical in the quadratic formula. And that's going to be b squared minus 4ac. Because if that turns out to be negative, then that doesn't have any solutions. But if it turns out to be positive or zero, then I have an intersection. But let me check. So b squared minus 4 times 1 times 3, 7, 5, 0. Let's see what that turns out to be. Come on, turn on my calculator. So minus 100 squared minus 4 times 3750. And I get a negative value. So this is less than 0, so there is no solution. So there is no intersection between the line and the circle. Now again, you can say, well, I already knew that. It doesn't matter. Prove it. So there's no solution, so there's no intersection, so there's that's all the equilibrium points that we have. That's it. 
Now the last thing then, we, we, well, let's plot these equilibrium points. We have 0, 0, we have 0, 50, and we have 100, 0. So the reason why we choose that, because we have an inkling that in between equilibrium points, or when we pass an equilibrium point, the direction of the arrows change. Well, there's no equilibrium points along here, so those should all point the same direction. There's no equilibrium point along there, so they should all point. Same thing here, all point the same direction. But here we might have a change of equilibrium. Now, I have to determine the direction, so I have to pick a bunch of ordered pairs that I have to pick one here, one here, one here, one here, and one along here. So how many is that? One, two, three, four, five ordered pairs. I'm going to plug them into dx, dt, dy, dt, determine their signs, s, i, g, n, s's, and then that will help me determine the directions of these guys. So let's start with along the circle or along the line. A good ordered pair is 50, 50. Uh, along the circle, I can use 25 square to 2, 25 square to 2. I just used a little trigonometry and kind of fiddled around because that's just an extended uh, unit circle there. And along here, I'm just going to use uh, 25, 0. Along here, I'm going to use 0, 25, which is in here, and then 0, 75 up there. And I'm just going to plug each one of these in here and determine the signs. Now I'm going to do this rather quickly, but you can do it yourself too. You take 50 for X and 50 for Y and you plug it in here. And just see what happens. So when I do that, I get DX DT equals 0, which is expected. And I get DY DT being a negative value. And this guy, I get DX DT greater than 0, and dy dt equals 0. Again, expected. This point lies on the null line here, so dx dt should be 0. This point lies on this null line, so dy dt should be 0. Make sure that everything is in sync. When I do 25, 0, I get dx dt is greater than 0, and then dy dt equals 0 because this is where y equals 0, so dy dt should be 0. When I do 0, 25, I get dx dt greater than 0, and dy dt equals 0. Now, does that make sense? That's when x equals 0. Well, I think that's reversed. Well, let me check this one for sure. So I'll show you how to use a calculator to check it. So if you want to do shortcuts, and students always like shortcuts, I'm going to let x equal 0 and y equal 25. So I'm going to put 0 and store it into x, and I put 25, and I'm going to store it into y. And you can do this in your calculator. It's not hard. And then I'm just going to type in dx dt. So it's going to be x times minus x minus y plus 100. And let's see what I get. I should get 0. Okay, so dx dt equals 0. I was noticing it wasn't making sense, so I'm going to check it. Now I'm going to put those same values into dy dt. So I'm just going to type y times minus x squared minus y squared plus 2500. And I'm getting something that's positive. Okay. Good. Now in order to do 0, 75, um, I'm just going to let x be 0 again, but I'm just going to let y be 75. And now I don't have to do as much typing. I can hit second entry and pull up dx dt, and I should get 0, and I can pull up dy dt. I have to just keep hitting second enter until I get it, and I get a negative value. So dx dt equals 0 as expected, and then dy dt is negative. So again, here's an error that I made. I'm like, well, it doesn't make sense that dx dt should be non-zero because x is 0 and dx dt should be 0 as expected. So I knew there was an error there. So let's interpret all these numbers. Where's my little red pen? 
So if I'm at 50-50, which is along here, dy dt is negative, so I should be pointing downward along here. On the circle, I should be pointing x dx dt is positive. I should be pointing to the right. At 25, 0, that's right there. I should be pointing to the right because dx dt is positive. Um, for 0, 25, dx dt, dy dt is positive. So I should be pointing upward here. And then for 0, 75, I should be pointing downward. So now I have my null clines and my vectors done. I have my equilibrium points done. And there is a good graph. Now let's make projections. It looks like this equilibrium point right here is going to be a source. This one here looks like it's going to be a sink. It looks like everything is pointing in that direction. And then this guy here looks like if I come up towards it, I'm going to be shoved off to the right. So this looks saddle-esque. So that's just my guess. Saddle, source, sink. And now the next video will show doing the Jacobian and proving that each of the equilibrium points you'll have a saddle, source, or a sink.